Hello everyone and welcome to Season 5, Episode 26 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host Travis McNeil and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches in NXT history with match number 25 on our list, which is the unsanctioned match between Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano from the NXT TakeOver New Orleans event held on April the 7th of 2018. So we've officially reached the halfway point in our countdown and it's with the match that I thought was the hardest match for me to rank for this project. Um, you know, it's funny when I, I create these, you know, countdown lists, I look at a lot of different criteria for the match. Um, I look at, you know, how it holds up and the longevity it has in rewatches. Uh, but I also look at, you know, the significance that the match had at the time and the historical impact that it, it overall has. Um, and this match, you know, has me feeling two very different ways, you know, now in 2022, as it did, you know, in, in 2018, you know, four years ago when this match happened. Um, and, you know, I, I have to kind of make that choice of, you know, do I, I put my, my 2018 hat back on and, and think about how I felt about it at the time? Or, you know, do I, do I heavily kind of look at, you know, overall how I, I feel about this match looking back on it? So, um, very hard for me to rank and ultimately it felt pretty appropriate with it landing, you know, smack dab in the, in the middle of the list. Um, I, I think that was, uh, was pretty apropos. Um, so this match, uh, had a, a great build up to it. Um, you know, these guys were, were partners as DIY, um, you know, pretty much right from their inception as a team. Um, it, you know, they, these two ended up squaring off uh, in the uh, the second round of the, uh, you know, Cruiserweight Classic tournament that WWE did. Um, and, you know, Gargano defeated Chomp in that match. And because of that, I think during their entire run as a tag team, you know, everybody expected Ciampa to turn on Gargano. I, at least I know that I certainly did. Um, you know, I, I think we thought it was going to happen, at, at, you know, in Brooklyn when they wrestled the Revival the first time. Um, in Toronto when they had the two out of three falls match where they ultimately won the title. I was expecting, you know, them to lose and the turn to happen there. Uh, and it got to the point, you know, where these guys were such a successful tag team that when they wrestled the Authors of Pain in a ladder match at the first NXT TakeOver Chicago in 2017, uh, it felt like that match was kind of their send-off to the main roster. Um, and it, it, they did a really great job with this because it finally felt like, in my mind, you know, that, that turn had kind of, you know, was was out of the picture. It just wasn't going to happen. And of course, you know, in great wrestling storytelling fashion, uh, you know, they did the the kind of post credit scene where Ciampa turned on Gargano and completely brutalized him. And I've talked about this in previous videos. You know, Ciampa unfortunately suffered a, a really terrible knee injury uh, that kept him out. You know, for the better part of a year at that point. It led to a Gargano singles run with Ciampa ultimately coming back um, and attacking Johnny Gargano, you know, after his tough loss to Andrade at NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. Gargano would end up getting a rematch for the NXT title uh, with the stipulation that he had to put his career on the line to do it. Ciampa would once again, you know, interfere, this time costing him the match and essentially sending him out of NXT. Uh, that led to this unsanctioned match. Gargano is not considered a member of the NXT roster, uh, but he was allowed to fight, you know, Tommaso Ciampa with no rules, um, you know, as, as the main event of TakeOver, very, you know, akin to, to Shawn Michaels and, and Triple H at SummerSlam 2002. You know, that Shawn Michaels influence is so, so strong in, in NXT at this point, especially, you know, with, with Johnny Gargano, um, that they would do the unsanctioned match. Uh, added little stipulation that if Gargano wins, he would, you know, get a, a new NXT contract. If he lost, uh, that that would be it. We wouldn't see him again. Um, so this match is is a little bit of a mixed bag because it's got tremendous crowd heat, it's got good action, and it has an amazing ending that is a great cap to the story that you know that these two ultimately set out to put on. Uh, the problem with it is, is when they did this match, you know, the, the kind of, you know, I'll call it like the NXT melodrama was not something that we had seen a ton of. Uh, so, you know, and, and here it kind of felt a little new, um, you know, that they were incorporating these, you know, dramatic kind of storytelling aspects to it. Uh, the problem is, is this would set the tone for a new style of main event match in NXT where we'd see this so often. And I talk about this in the Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai video where they kind of break the mold and, 
and you know deviate from that you know by by having a you know quick you know these these quick little hesitations and things like that that kind of feel a bit more organic uh you know what i find with these two um, it, it feels really forced, and the the problem that I had here is they would run this match into the ground. So you have this amazing blow off that they do here in New Orleans on WrestleMania weekend, and then they follow it up at the next takeover with a Chicago street fight, which was an interesting match because the first half of the Chicago street fight I prefer to anything they do in this match. Uh, it's it's really heated. Um, it's a great brawl. Uh, but then the second half of that match, you know, they, they maybe do like three actual moves through it and it's all of this like resting and drama and, and all of this, you know, extra bells and whistle stuff that completely took me out of it. Uh, from there, they would go on and they would have a third match for the third consecutive takeover uh, at, you know, in Brooklyn. They would do a last man standing match where it would be a little bit of both. You'd have, you know, some of the good elements from the first two matches. You'd have, you know, some of the bad elements, for, you know, from the, especially the second match. Uh, but then it had the most laughable finish that I've ever seen in pro wrestling. Uh, you know, where Johnny Gargano's rage gets the absolute best of him and he delivers one final knee to Tommaso Ciampa, but, you know, his momentum sends him careening off the, the entrance stage so that he can't answer the 10 count. It was just, it, it was also maddening to me and, and completely laughable at that point. Uh, you know, it, it felt like that jumped the shark, like it had turned into parody. Then, you know, it, it, we don't stop there as we get into 2019. Uh, you know, we have a, a Gargano heel turn, um, a DIY reunion, and then a Gargano face turn where it was all a big swerve to lure Chompa into a, a false sense of security because Gargano ultimately knew that Chompa was going to try to double cross him. It was all so convoluted. Um, it was leading to these two having a two out of three falls match at the WrestleMania weekend takeover um, in New York City. Um, unfortunately, Chompa would go out again with a neck injury this time, and it would lead to, um, you know, what ultimately I found to be a much better match in, in Gargano and Adam Cole having the two out of three falls match instead. Um, Chompa would eventually come back with, from the neck injury. They would go back to these guys once again, which was supposed to be WrestleMania weekend 2020. Um, you know, that takeover didn't happen as planned because of COVID. Um, ultimately, they would end up having a cinematic match, the one final beat. Um, which I just thought was absolutely atrocious and the the worst version of, you know, all of these guys putting together, you know, their, their melodrama and their overacting and, and things like that. And, and by that point, I was just so completely over, you know, these two wrestling each other. Um, so, you know, with me having, you know, all of that in me now, going back and watching this match, that at the time, you know, I remember when TakeOver New Orleans ended and it was such a good show and I felt so great about wrestling and I, I loved what they did here. But going back and watching this match now, it is sullied a little bit. So, uh, you know, I, I can't rank it higher for that because even, you know, the the slight melodrama they do at the end now causes me to roll my eyes where it didn't at the time but that said you know this was a really big match for NXT at the time uh you know it was really well reviewed I think Meltzer gave it five stars people loved it uh so you know it, it still is a worthy inclusion on this list and I think absolutely by far it's the best overall match that these two had done together uh, Tommaso Ciampa, I give him a lot of credit for, you know, how he was, um, as a character in this initial, you know, heel run leading up to this match, um, because, you know, it, it, so often we see, you know, heels that still come across as kind of cool and, you know, get, get cheered and, you know, people still like them. Um, but this, it really felt like legitimate heat for Ciampa, like the crowd, hated him wwe does something you know so well with him that they they never do and that's just tone things down and let things breathe and be as how they are and they did that with champa where they didn't give him entrance music which was so great because this you know just this piece of garbage would walk out to the ring with no crowd sound and just soak in you know the booze and the crowd reaction um, and, you know, the, the crowd, they, they go a little rogue and, you know, there's, there's F.U. Ciampa, you know, chants and, and everything like that. And he's just so good at, like, closing his eyes and, and soaking it all in. 
Um, just really, really great character work. And, you know, it, it's something, like I said, that WWE doesn't do too often. They they feel they need to overproduce everything. And here, just by stripping it back, it made it so more impactful than it would be otherwise. Uh, on the flip side of the coin, coin uh, Johnny Gargano is the ultimate babyface. There's, you know, little Johnny Gar Gargano, you know, print out crowd signs, like, with his little face emoji thing I don't know what it is but they're they're everywhere in the crowd and the crowd is you know 100% behind him there's no 50 50 there's no 60 40 there's no 90 10 it is 100% a crowd that favors Johnny Gargano and it makes the match so much better because of it um we get you know like a really intense stare down to start and they, they go to fists and you know smartly Johnny Gargano who you know is, is wanting to, to tear Ciampa's head off. He gets, you know, this early run of, of just fist and, you know, stomps a mud hole in him and Ciampa's kind of left bailing and, and gets out to the floor. Uh, Gargano, you know, wipes him out with a tope and throws him over the barricade and dives over the barricade onto him. And you really get this sense of like, okay, you know, these, these guys hate each other. Like there is this grudge here. Um, they, they go to, you know, something that would become a hallmark throughout their feud and that both guys would start to use in their individual matches as well. And that's exposing the concrete floor. Uh, so they tease that early. It doesn't get used. Um, we then move into a tease of the announcer's table. Um, and they did a really great spot here that I loved where, you know, they're, they're teasing that someone's going to go through that table and, uh, Chompa just ends up suplexing Gargano off the table to the floor. Um, I liked it, you know, we get so used to the tropes of, of you know, these big announcer's table spots, um, but, you know, here it, it was great uh, because, you know, they, they took us in another direction with it. It was a brutal spot that, you know, came across as unexpected and organic, and it was really nice. Um, you know, from, from there, Gargano is, you know, left getting beat down, and, you know, we get a little bit of a an elongated kind of methodical beat down on him. Ciampa does a really good job, you know, being brutal and being menacing and being dirty. Um, commentary, you know, they do a, a pretty good job putting it over as, you know, that the referee can't stop anything because it's an unsanctioned match, and he's only there, you know, to, to count the fall or grab the submission. Uh, the crowd, you know, gives Ciampa good heat during all of this, so it it works, and it, it adds to that overall, you know, story of the match. Um, we get a little bit of a hokey spot where, you know, Ciampa goes to the floor, and, you know, he intimidates a, a fan with a bad leg and grabs his crutches, and again, you know, it felt a little forced and felt a little silly, uh, but it was a way for them to incorporate these crutches, you know, which are an integral part of the story because it's, you know, the, the crutch that Ciampa used to wipe out Gargano at NXT TakeOver Philly. Uh, so, you know, it, it, overall it was fine. You know, I, I wish there was maybe a more organic way they could have went about with it. Um, you know, even have Ciampa come out with the crutches at the start to be symbolic. I, I don't know, but it, it was fine. Um, but they, you know, Ciampa goes for these crutches and Gargano, you know, dodges and, and avoids these crutches at all costs, you know, kind of doing the, the tease of those. Um, and eventually we go back to the concrete floor. So Gargano, you know, teases that he's going to hit the slingshot DDT, the one final beat to the floor on the concrete. Ciampa blocks that, teases, you know, an air raid crash off the apron of the concrete. Gargano gets out of that and ends up power bombing Ciampa on the concrete, which was brutal. Um... And you get like a perfect crowd reaction here because they start chanting like you deserve it at Ciampa. And I thought that was like a, actually pretty clever, uh, really good. And again, you know, showed how, you know, the, the crowd just hated Ciampa and wanted him to suffer at this point. Um, so in, in a twist, Gargano ends up getting his hands on the crutches, uh, you know, and he uses those to brutalize Ciampa. Um, we move into kind of like a near fall sequence where these guys start, you know, unloading their big moves on each other. So it does deviate a little bit from that kind of fight feel that they had where it transitions more into that traditional pro wrestling match. But, you know, but all of these guys have big, you know, sick moves. So, even, you know, even that I, I thought was fine. Um, we get, you know, a near fall off the one final beat. Uh, we get reverse Ranas. Uh, we get air raid crashes, you know, everything like that that's getting kicked out of. Um, Gargano ends up getting the Gargano escape on Ciampa and he just completely claws, you know, at Gargano's eye to break it. Um, again, just, you know, showing how, how dirty he is, uh, which I, I really liked. Um, 
from there, you know, he tries to use his wrist tape to, to choke Gargano again, you know, a great dirty tactic. Um, and Gargano kind of blocks that. And then we get this elongated sequence where uh, Gargano is holding on to Ciampa's wrist tape. So, you know, they kind of have that wrist control, you know, like you'd see in like an Okada Tanahashi match or whatever, um, where they're just, you know, trading punches back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And they do that for a while. Um, and it's really just set up for Mauro Ranallo, you know, to make the call on commentary that, you know, just like these two have always been chained together as partners and, you know, they're chained once again as, as rivals and, it was fine, again, a little, a little kind of campy, but it, it was all right. It, it still kind of worked. Um, and then, you know, that allows Ciampa to, to go to the crutch. So he finally gets, you know, the shots with the crutch. Um, you know, he uses Project Ciampa. It only gets him to, uh, he uses, you know, his portion of the meat in the middle, which was the DIY finisher, which is the running knee. And he does, you know, the, the kind of DIY taunt thing before it, but, you know, he does it like arrogantly and very smarmy and it, and that all worked. I really, I really liked all of that. Uh, Gargano ends up getting a, a lawn dart, uh, but into an exposed turnbuckle. And then hits, you know, his side of, you know, meet in the middle, the, the kneeling super kick. Uh, it only gets him to, um, and then we go into a, a really, really big spot in the match where, you know, they go up on top and they cut each other off and they trade all of these moves. And Ciampa ends up hitting Project Ciampa off the top. Um, only good for two, you know, huge move that, that got a kick out. Uh, but the real kind of impact of that is that that leads to Ciampa hurting his knee. Um, so we put, you know, everything he had into that move. Um, it shows, you know, the heart of Johnny Gargano that he wouldn't succumb to it and he kicked out. And, you know, Ciampa sacrificed that, you know, still bad knee um, to, to try to, you know, put that damage on, on Gargano, right? That, that, again, that rage almost got the best of him. So he ends up removing his knee brace um, because, you know, he, he knows that he has to hit that running knee, that big shot one more time. Uh, but his knee is, is too damaged. So he takes the brace off. He takes the knee pad off. Um, and as he's going for that big knee, uh, Gargano just hits him in the knee with the knee brace. You know, kind of really nice, you know, ironic twist of fate there. Um, and he grabs the crutch and he, you know, stomps on the crutch and breaks off a jagged piece of it. And teases, you know, the, the Magnum TA, Tully Blanchard, you know, Starcade 85 I quit match finish. That he's going to dig it into the Chompa's head and really make him, you know, pay um, but Ciampa, you know, at this point, he's kind of just sitting, you know, stoically on the mat and, you know, almost tells Gargano, like, okay, you know, do what you got to do. And this is where we kind of get that, you know, melodrama aspect where, you know, there was a famous shot of these two at, you know, the Cruiserweight Classic after Gargano won, you know, where they, they kind of sat on the mat together, um, you know, cross-legged side by side. And that's where you initially thought Ciampa was going to turn and they would you know, tease that over and over again with these guys, you know, in, in different post-matches. Uh, so Gargano, you know, proceeds to, to sit down beside Ciampa, um, you know, that symbolic kind of reference to, to DIY. And of course, you know, Ciampa was using it to bait Gargano in, tries to hit him with the knee brace. Gargano sees it coming, ducks, grabs the Gargano escape, turns it into a leg trap Gargano escape, you know, almost like an STF with a bad leg grabs the brace, puts it over Ciampa's face and pulls back on it for pretty much an immediate tap out. It was disgusting. It was this great finish. It tied in, you know, the, the bad knee, the knee brace, you know, all of that. And it was a really great fitting cherry on top. Um, you know, it felt like a legitimate finish. It felt like a finish worthy of, you know, ending this this big blow off and this big feud, you know, before it would continue to carry on for the, the next two years and be run into the ground. Uh, so like I said, you know, this match, it, it's got a lot of elements that I, I really, really like. The crowd is there. The character work is there. You know, the melodrama is not too bad. There's a couple hokey spots, but I let him go. It's, you know, got a, a pretty good fight feel at the start. When it does turn into, you know, the super indie big moves kick out thing, it all still kind of works. So overall, this match is, is, you know, a, a good package. Uh, like I said, I do prefer the first half of the Chicago match. If you took the first half of the Chicago match um, and, you know, kind of mixed it in with some of the elements of this match, I think overall, you know, you would have had a masterpiece. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, and, and I might be the, the low man, you know, for these matches. And I, I'm sure they're, they're held in a lot higher regard than I might, uh, you know, consider them to be. 
Uh, you know, and and maybe you have some criticism about this match, you know, only being number 25 on the list and it being the only, you know, Gargano versus Ciampa match that I chose to include. Uh, but, you know, that's that's how I feel about it. You know, looking back, if we did this, you know, countdown in 2018, I'm sure this match would have been a lot higher. But doing it back, you know, 2021, 2022, uh, you know, this this is where I, I felt it, it made sense to place it. It's something, you know, memorable in the legacy of NXT. It's a good watch, but, you know, smack dab in the middle. It's, you know, better than, than some of the lower end matches that, you know, I have on this countdown that are, you know, obviously all still great. Uh, but it's not, you know, to the, the complete high level uh, of some of the, the absolute all-time classics that NXT produced. You can watch this match, of course, on Peacock. If you're outside the U.S., it's on the WWE Network. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.